Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, we were uh, uh, discussing about uh, different facts related to the C++ uh, language and the basic things. Uh, so the structure, control structures that we have already used in C, a similar control structure will be used. Uh, all of us know that there are mainly three control structure. That is the sequence structure, selection structure and loop structure. And these are the um, corresponding figures uh, or flowcharts by which we can uh, just represent the sequence structure, the selection and selection is implemented with switch case statement and uh, the loop structure that, can, that is uh, different loops can be used like do while while for loops etc. So all the, all the uh, facts related to if else switch case do while while all these things remain same as we have used them in C. Next, uh, there are different types of functions that you can find in C++. So mainly, uh, we know that the functions, they divide the program, uh, means, uh, means we divide the program into different functions and uh, we'll be, <coughs> if you can uh, divide the program in uh, proper uh, well-maintained functions and if we can uh, send the data from one function to another function through proper manner, then we can uh, possibly we can reduce the size of the program uh, by calling different function and also we can uh, have a structured uh, structured program okay so C++ it also uses different types of functions uh, and f function overloading like operator overloading function overloading is also permitted here so mainly uh, these are the different types of functions that we found uh, that is the main function and in main function uh, you can call uh, different other functions, maybe member function or non-member functions. Member functions are de declared and uh, defined in the class or outside the class that we will see in, in the next chapter. And uh, there is a very special function called inline function, which is actually a small function and that is extended whenever they are called inside the class, inside the program, they are extended with the definition. And uh, frame function is also a very uh, important and uh, specific special function which is having some specific use. We will discuss that and the virtual function. So virtual function is uh, used as Sir has already discussed. It is used to implement the uh, one type of polymorphism. So <coughs> we will be discussing uh, these three functions, first three functions and then uh, uh, gradually we will be discussing the frame function and uh, virtual function. Okay. So the main function here you know, we all know that the C, C program main function may have it does not return any value that is syntactically we don't write any anything in uh, uh, in C this one for pure C compilers for C++ compiler uh, this is the uh, function uh, this is the prototype for uh, main function that it always returns an int and it uh, sends a void okay so why uh, it returns int and y this is the syntax you need to maintain this fixed syntax that sir has already discussed you know that you know that na? yes ma'am yeah. yes, ma so uh, another syntax is this you can also use so if you have used files and uh, if you want to take some command line arguments that can also be done with argc and argv so i'm not uh, discussing this thing next is uh, uh, the uh, main function uh, always whenever you use this int it must return this uh, zero okay it must contain this statement return zero so actually this uh, in, an, in a normal convention if we uh, provide this return zero it, it means we are exiting from the program and uh, exiting value is zero if it zero it means the program is uh, successfully it, uh, it is executed and it ran okay so return zero is just to signify that your program uh, program has been uh, run successfully and that is the end of the program and to support this one this return type we also write down this return zero okay <coughs> next is the member function member function is nothing different than the non member functions uh, member function actually we use whenever we uh, write down the class declaration so we'll be writing down uh, in a class we'll be writing down different data members so in a class we'll be writing down different uh, 
डेटा मेम्बार्स एंड डिफरेंट मेम्बर फांगशनस सो दिस मेम्बर फांगशनस एक्चुअलि व्हाट उइ हाव अलरेडी डिसकस दैट दिस मेम्बर फांगशन एक्चुअलि वार्क ऑन दिस डेटा मेम्बार्स सो मेम्बर फांगशन इज नट डिफरेंट दैन द अदार नन मेम्बर फांगशनस इट इट इज लाइक ए नर्माल फांगशन सो लाइक ए नर्माल फांगशन उ नीड टू डू फांगशन प्रोटोटाइपिंग और फांगशन डिक्लरेशन सो द ब्लू वन इज द सिंटैक्स फर नर्माल फांगशन डिक्लरेशन एंड Uh, this is how we declare that we all know and in uh, in the uh, uh, just after the class de uh, definition uh, whether inside class or outside class we need to define the function the same function so this is prototyping that means we are telling that what is the return type what are the arguments it is taking and then then uh, the definition is the defining of the whole body of the function and uh, in main we call normally we call the function so there are some convention some methods some rules are there for calling the member function that we will see next and next is the inline function so this is a very interesting one so if uh, means briefly if we call a function uh, the, there are some steps to be executed that is uh, whenever any function is called the cpu first stores the address of the function call in the memory and then it copies the argument that are passed on the stack by push method all of you know this then the then the cpu transfer the control to the specific uh, specified function next the uh, function code is executed and uh, pop method will return the value that is stored in the predefined memory okay and finally the controls are returned to the caller function so if i uh, if i just mark them as five steps for this 1 2 3 and 5 if i consider Uh, this four is taking a uh, time total time taken by one two three and five is t one and for this four that means execution of the code actual code it takes t two now say this t one is say this uh, this code is it is a very long program if it is a very long program uh, or a large program then this t one is negligible. that means uh, storing and all calling uh, everything returning everything that is negligible uh, in uh, means in comparison to t2 but if the function is small then <coughs> this is a overhead because say uh, you have a function that is of 10000 lines of code okay and just you need to call it once if it is called once in a program then it will execute uh, at a time 10000 code 10000 instruction and then it get return so t2 is much large than t1 but in say you are having a three line code three in uh, a function that is having three line code okay say there is a function and this function is called 10000 times so just the reverse condition that time for small function this t1 that means calling and returning and pushing pop everything it will take much time then then uh, the actual time taken for execution okay so this this thing need to be bridge so inline function is to reduce the overhead of t1 that means if the function is a small function say a small function is there but it is called several times okay so <coughs> function execution time in a small function is less than the switching time so it is a overhead t1 so uh, to reduce the overhead we have used the inline function so inline function is why how it is uh, reducing the inline inline function is expanded inline when uh, when it is called the whole code of the inline function it get inserted in place of the um, declaration that means uh, in the in place of when when you are calling actually the function the call is replaced by the definition so at the point of function call at the point where the function is called at that point the whole inline function the whole function definition get inserted okay so explicitly you can use this inline keyword but uh, man means you can use this one or normally you can call them or maybe uh, if you don't uh, write down it is a inline function if it is small uh, function and written inside main and uh, uh, written inside the program the 
compiler determines by itself that whether it will be inlined or not by default small functions are inlined whether you are writing this keyword inline or not okay so they are invoked uh, like normal functions they are invoked you are just if this is a function called inline uh, double <coughs> cube and double a and it is returning just one statement that it is returning a into a into a okay so this if uh, if any com uh, function like this having only one line one two three lines of statement and only one line of instruction uh, having a return type and if you call this thing several times so that time wherever it is called it will be replaced by this definition and you can just call them by this cube 3.0 cube this like this they will be called automatically okay so the inline keyword it it, it actually uh, not a compulsory command okay it actually sends a request to the compiler that you can consider me as inline function okay means but it de depends on the compiler compiler decides that whether to take it as a inline function or as a normal function so it may ignore the request if the function definition is long if say uh, if say there is a return statement but it is not returning anything or too complicated okay then it will be compiling the function as a normal function it depends on the compiler you will not understand as a user that whether you are writing the inline function or whether any function not written as inline will be considered as inline or not okay so it is possible that the compiler does not inline the function marked as inline and uh, even if it is not marked compiler may sometimes consider it as a inline function okay so functions that are declared and defined inside a class need not to be defined as inline function because by default all are inline and there are here i have listed down some of the scenarios where the request for inlining will not work that is if the function returning values if a loop uh, for for the functions returning values if a loop or switch or go go to exist if there is a return statement but it is not returning or if your function contains some static variables or if it is in recursive so if it is recursive that means it is calling it again and again again and again so it will it will actually cannot be expanded or if you expand it it will go on uh, means expanding the thing for a long it it will become a long code after all okay so uh, <coughs> the inline function it makes the program run faster uh, because of the overhead of a function call and return is eliminated okay because you no need to call the function no need to push all these things in the stack just the program just the where you are calling the function that in that place the definition get replaced by the compiler okay but it takes up more memory because every time you are using using this uh, means calling this with uh, with the same variables and all so it is taking more memory because the statements defined in inline function is reproduced at every point okay so memory and speed the, there is a trade off becomes means there is there is a ba balance necessary between the memory requirement of memory and speed and that is decided by the compiler that whether to make it inline or not okay so it is uh, you just a simple example of inline function i have included here uh, just you see so i have written here uh, inline and inline these keywords are necessary Uh, these are the definitions and in main this is a normal c program okay just i have used c out and c in so uh, here uh, here i have just called this multiplic mul mul uh, multiplication function and division function okay and where they are called this this will be if it is inline it will be replaced and if you consider say in this the same function if you if you have written down in line but you have included say one loop or maybe three four statements it depends on the compiler that whether it will consider it as in line or as a normal function that means whether it will do do the push push and pop and all these things as a normal function or it will be replacing the call by the function okay so you can see uh, uh, you have seen the different i i think you have used macros preprocessors in c isn't it yes, isn't it uh, similar like the uh, macros in line functions like macros what actually happened in macros macros are not functions okay 
macros are preprocessors. So before compiling, before compiling the uh, preprocessor works and the preprocessor examines. See if this if this is the example. The preprocessor examines where this macro, where these macros is are used, and it will be evaluated every time. Wherever they are called, wherever they are used, it will be evaluated before the compilation is done. They, this this particular macro, this definition is here. It will be replaced here also. It will be replaced, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So there are clear clear separation. There are clear difference between inline and macros in C plus plus. Okay. So inline function is a normal function. The and uh, means it is made uh, this keyword keyword inline is used and whenever the function is called that will be replaced by the definition and that is done by the compiler at the compilation time but preprocessors they are defined with has defined keyword and the preprocessor whenever they detect a macro that will be replaced by the macro definition and macro is not a function okay so here i have listed down some of the difference between the inline function and macro just you uh, go through them so inline function is defined by inline keyword and macros with hash defined and uh, through inline function the class data members can be accessed but we cannot access macro along with the class okay so <coughs> the debugging of the inline function is easily done but for the macros you need to first do do the preprocessor to work and then you can uh, debug it and all these things okay so uh, in case of inline the arguments are evaluated only once but in case of macros every time you, the macro is called it will be evaluated every time the maximum this for these two values it is evaluated for these two values it is evaluated every time it will be evaluated okay so these are the these are the difference between this and inline functions they are terminated by curly braces and macro is not terminated by any symbol it is terminated by a new line okay so there are there are clear differences between inlines and macros so one can say that it is similar to macro but it's not similar it is a function you always remember this thing okay so some in some programs we will be writing down uh, inline functions if it is required so this is just for uh, the knowledge Next is, uh, I think sir has already discussed uh, this thing, default arguments. Have, uh, have we discussed this thing, default arguments? No. Okay, okay. Let me discuss it. So, um, say for example, if we have a class like, if we have a function like this. Okay. So, normally what we, what we write down, in a function we write down the return type. In the function, this is the function syntax. Then the function name. function name and argument list so this is normally we do and what during calling what we do we write down the function name and then we pass the arguments as per the argument list so this you know that whenever it is passed the argument list they maintain the order order of the arguments type of the arguments how they are called and the number of the arguments that we need to do so in the declaration we declare all whatever be the arguments in this function and a number of arguments etc what will be the type if the type is say int three arguments are there int int and last one is float then we will be writing down uh, we will be passing in during the calling function we will be passing some int and some float value like this they should match also you know how the function is overloading okay i'll be discussing this thing a little bit also so now the thing is this value passing thing if we uh, means once it is called and then we are calling this we are doing this value for passing in two statements okay sometimes we can pass some default value during the declaration okay so default values are specified when the function is declared default value means means if you not provide any value for any particular argument it will it will take the default value okay so now the question is say for example this one i have taken the float 
principal int period and float rate is equal to 0 0.15 so 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 this one this actually is a default value okay just a minute class actually okay so uh, <coughs> this one this one is the default value okay so um, what is the use of this default value if say we are providing we are calling this one uh, this amount function we are calling with this 5007 so this 5000 that belongs to the principal and 7 is the period but this particular rate we have not passed so if you are not passed the if it is having some default value it will consider that one okay so this is uh, the use of default value that we can provide some default value sometimes it is required that uh, we will be uh, considering some default value and uh, for, the, for rest of the arguments we will be passing value according to the user's wish okay so that time we can do that so there are certain rules related to default values so whenever we call some uh, function like this if we write down this now say this the same function is called amount with 5005 and uh, this so this is the principal this is the what was the thing principal and this is the period and this one is the rate so now if i provide a rate value the that the default value 0 0.15 it it gets overridden and then it will be considered okay so there is no missing argument so explicit value is passed and that value will be considered the current value will be considered okay so there is a only a rule that only the trailing arguments can have default values and we need to add default values from right to left okay so if this is a function we can write down from right side to left side we can assign the default values this is these two rules we need to maintain okay so you say this statement is right or not if we consider the default values for this so this is right. right this one is right but this one i have uh, given a default value uh, here and here both are trailing but not from uh, middle me, uh, uh, in the middle there is one uh, um, value that is not one argument that is not having any default value or any value okay we have not passed so this will not work okay so this will not work similarly for this one also this is right the left one is initialized but right one is not initialized so this one is no, no, also not work this one also not work okay so default arguments are sometimes useful if we have different types of function like this and uh, this is one example let me show you the code so the same code i have written here say this one this is float value where three variables three arguments are passed one float p int n and float r okay so r is having 0 0.15 oh. and uh, the print line function is having a character star and this length is 40 okay so both the both are initialized with default value now say um, uh, we are writing Perhaps it increase font size huh? uh, font size increase how to increase this is the large can i increase in this way is it visible now yeah okay so uh, see here uh, first uh, the first this one okay for the first one here the float p and uh, int n and this value is supplied okay and here uh, i have supplied one character and uh, star and length so both the values are uh, both both the arguments are having default value for print line okay so now uh, this is in in main we'll be calling them okay so first we are calling this one we are providing 5005 for value we are providing this one okay so 5005 we are providing so here it is taking the default argument at 0. Point, this uh, 0. 0.15 okay so let me run it and see what is the difference okay and for for this one we are not specifying anything say we are not specifying anything okay we are just specifying space so if i run it 
so what what it will run yeah so here it is just uh, multiplying uh, i think value yeah value is p n r divided by 100 so this one is the value uh, function and it is it is doing with 5 5005 and 0 0.15 and it is 37.5 okay and this 40 star are printed here as print line because print line function in print line function whatever be the length up to that that one this character variable will be printed okay now say we are changing it if we if we change this thing as say 5005 and say this is uh, 0 0.2 and this one say we have changed it as a new character say this so if i run it now see the final value is 50 and so it is taking this 0 0.2 over this 0 0.15 and it is also taking this uh, this one okay now say for example if i uh, provide this as 20 or say 60 and run it so now the value is this and this is increased so this line is increased or if i if i change this one as this this one as plus sign okay so you understand how the default values and how the explicit values are overwriting the default values so every time we need to write it down so now say uh, in place of this let us take 10 here and let us remove this one okay and uh, let us provide uh, keeping other things same say let us not provide this value let's provide this one so see whether it will run or not so it is it is giving some error what is what is the error it is giving following two parameters which has default argument so this is this parameter has in, uh, don't have default argument okay so this is actually not permissible so this is the error it is giving so we cannot do this one in between this we cannot do this one or here also if we provide some value it will not work okay so this is how it it should work so you understand this thing Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, in some functions, you may have seen default values. Next is the function overloading. So, sir has already discussed that what function overloading is. That means if we have, uh, if, if a single person is overloaded with different roles, like I am a teacher, I am teaching you, my load is to teach you this subject, take the lab, etc. And then when I am going to uh, the office there I am uh, acting uh, as a warden of any hostel okay maybe uh, when we are um, maybe there are some courses that are online I am I am doing the, that course enroll that course so there I will be appearing as a student or maybe I am uh, going for a conference where I am going to present a paper there I am appearing as a researcher okay so the same person can have different functions or different behaviors different roles so the similar in the similar way we can have different roles for a function so this function overloading is necessary in various places in c++ okay so how the overload function calls are handled by compiler that also you know so i am just giving you some examples here so how uh, how it is uh, how the compiler differentiate between these two this add and this add tell me this is having three integer two integer uh, arguments and this is having three integer arguments so what will be how when they are converting this uh, function call how they will be uh, understanding how they will be differentiating between these two prototypes add intent add, yeah, add intent, intent and intent int. okay so this this is the thing this sir has already discussed so i'm not uh, going to discuss this thing and we all know that whenever we do the similar function calls they matches the prototype by using the number and types of the arguments and they are passing okay so this is one example of function overloading and this is the end of this uh, chapter okay the introduction 
so next is uh, we will be discussing little bit about the class okay uh, next day next day i'll be tomorrow we are having one class na at 9 yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so tomorrow uh, we'll discuss uh, this thing until now if you have any query you can ask me i think these things are very simple things that uh, that have already discussed in the class and um, whenever um, uh, we'll be doing programming uh, keeping the object oriented features in our mind uh, depending on your program you can design the solution and you can use different types of things like whenever you if you need some inline function or if you need to overload different functions different function overloadings we'll be seeing one chapter there is called uh, constructor so uh, where the function overloading is very much necessary the idea of function overloading then also we'll be covering up uh, how to write down uh, different operator overloading functions etc okay so next day uh, tomorrow we'll see we'll see how the classes are created okay and then how the objects are created and how to do uh, the program using how to solve a problem using classes and objects okay and what are the different parts of a c++ program okay so if you don't have any query you can leave for today and let us meet on tomorrow